We've acquired new airbrush capabilities since our last meeting, and we are prepared to use them in this video. Well, hey everyone, and welcome back to another Innocent Model. Well, the techniques that our good captain was referring to here have to do with some airbrushes I'm going to be showing you here. Um, this is really an extension of the Galeri airbrush review I did back in the latter part of 2023. If you recall, I did a review on this brush here. This is the GHAC 98 from Galeri, and I've been actually using this airbrush ever since and been very happy and pleased with the performance of this airbrush. Now the reason I kicked off our video here with the Picard bus is because in this video I'm going to be trying a painting technique I learned about at Wonderfest a few years ago. I sat in on a panel discussion that had to do with painting skin details and uh, painting busts with uh, a more realistic look to them. And uh, when I got home I tried that painting technique with my Patriot 105 airbrush but I quickly found out there's a lot of limitations to this airbrush. It really wasn't the right kind to have for trying a technique like this. So I actually set this whole thing aside. I haven't really thought about it uh, since then. But what brought it to mind was Galeri contacted me about this premium uh, limited edition kit. It's going to be limited to 300 releases that includes an airbrush of the 0.3 and 0.2 size from their Mobius line. The Mobius line now is a new set of airbrushes that have some modifications that will allow me to provide a finer spray out of that airbrush. And I thought this would be a great opportunity to try them using this technique. Now, what I'm gonna do in this video is first show you what comes inside the kit. We'll talk a little bit about the modifications they made with these airbrushes, and then we'll move on to our Picard bus. Let's take a look. So the collection comes packaged in this beautiful box and opening it up, we can see an envelope containing a card which describes what comes with this. And we have a couple of stickers that sport their logo. We also have an instruction booklet that serves as a quick start guide and descriptions on how to use the various adjustment knobs as well as disassembling the brush. So as mentioned, this collection comes with both brushes from their premium line they call Mobius. We have the 0.3 and 0.2 brushes, both beautifully designed. The quality is very good and both have a really nice weight to them. Let's go and take a look at the 0.3 first. So a few features to point out here that differentiate these airbrushes from their ACE series, the first of which is a new front nozzle design, and they call it the Spiral Micro Air Channel or MAC nozzle design. Let's go ahead and take a closer look here. So this is a unique design and my description here is going to come from their website. It's supposed to preserve low pressure and atomization by allowing the air to come in vertically. It then decelerates as it spirals, then accelerates as it exits linearly. Basically what it's supposed to do is to improve precision as you spray. The nozzle is also designed to make this assembly a bit easier. The second feature here is this cutaway at the end of the brush which gives you the ability to adjust the spring tension of the trigger. Speaking of the trigger, both brushes also feature a new trigger design. This one is rectangular versus the round ones we see with the A series. Well, let's go ahead and take a look now at the 0.2 brush, which is similar in a lot of ways, but there are a few differences. First, it comes with a smaller paint cup, which makes sense because you don't use a lot of paint when spraying finer details. Most importantly here is the adjustment knob that allows to further control the airflow and emission, and it's this feature that will give me the ability to provide finer detailing, which I'll demonstrate here shortly. The one thing I have found so far when trying to paint these finer lines is inconsistency of output and they claim a lot of these features will help maintain stable atomization and spraying efficiency, so hopefully that will be the case here. And as you can see, this brush also features the cutaway and control knobs at the end of the brush. Also included are these nice weighted stands and these are used to rest your airbrush on when not in use. We have a few extra O-rings and finally this little Chotsky commemorating the year of the dragon. All right, let me go ahead and move on now to demonstrating the uh, precision of the 0.2 airbrush. All right, let's go ahead and move on to that paint test. And I thought I would begin by first using the GHAC 98 from their A-Series. And I'm sure with practice you can get a finer line than what I'm achieving here, but this is how it's turning out. So let's move on now to comparing it to the 0.2 Mobius. And already you can tell I'm coming out with a finer line. Transitioning over to a black paint to see if I can make it show up a little better for you guys. But either way, I'm really liking what I'm seeing here. 
Now I will eventually show you how the point three brush works out. Uh, I'm going to be using that on Picard's tunic, but we are going to be using that point two for the face details. So let's talk a little bit about this technique. First letting you know about this Picard bus. I'm sure you're wondering where I got it from. Um, since it's first showing it to you, I've primed it white and uh, the, the bust itself is from a designer named Antonio Dato. So you can find him on CG Trader. Let me share with you some of his other work here. Uh, this is Picard next to his Data and LaForge bust. And most recently he did this one of Beverly Crusher. He's got Worf. And he's also done some of the characters from the original series. And some Star Wars busts as well. So take a look at that page. I'm sure you're just as amazed as I was when I first saw his work. Man, he was able to achieve some great likenesses here. Uh, this one in particular, he is proud of. I was communicating with Antonio to let him know I was going to be uh, using this bust in this demonstration. And so he's curious to see how this will all turn out. Now this was printed at 80% of its original size. Uh, I could have printed it just a little bit larger, but this is what I chose to go with. The bust now has been primed with a white primer. This is Steinel Res's white. Now let me go ahead and fill you in on this technique. So this was taught by a gentleman named Randy Van Dyke. He was at Wonderfest a few years ago. Uh, this is a picture of the Superman bust that I showed earlier. And there are various steps to this process, the first of which is to apply that burnt sienna color that I was demonstrating uh, the Mobius airbrush with to help define areas that are going to be shadowed. This is an example of how it looked with that Superman bust. And the technique then proceeds on to applying various layers of color. One step in particular requires that the airbrush apply these squiggly marks in these reddish and purplish colors. And when all said and done, hopefully what we'll have is a more realistic uh, kind of modeled appearance to uh, replicate the look of, of actual skin tones. Now, one last thing I want to mention before we get started here are the colors I'll be using are different than ones Randy used in his demonstration. I actually did purchase a number of those paints at Wonderfest a few years ago, but they did not hold up well in those bottles. They clumped up and became unusable. So rather than using those, I'm going to be using some colors from Monument Hobbies instead. My family gave me a, a whole set of Monument colors uh, for Christmas, and uh, so I added to that set by going back to the hobby store and purchasing some transparent colors that I'll be using here with this demonstration. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm curious to see how this works out. Well, I decided to go ahead and paint the clothes first because it's going to be easier to mask that off. So we'll get to the face in a moment here. And just bear in mind the dryer is going on in the background, so that's why you hear all that racket. Now, as for the red, uh, the command red in Next Generation. Uh, wasn't really a true bright red. I know depending on how the lighting conditions were uh, on the set and when they filmed the show, uh, it can sometimes vary. Now I've seen the uniforms that they've used on screen and it really is more of a burgundy color. Uh, but again, that can kind of vary. So I like to replicate what I see on screen. Sometimes if you uh, try to paint them exactly as they are in real life, it, something looks a little off. So what I decided to do was to mix a couple of colors of red for the tunic. Um, using this pyro red and burnt red. It makes a, a richer red color uh, versus something that's really bright. I think I'll reserve this for the highlights or some version of it anyway, and maybe this for the shadows. Uh, as for the black color on the top part, uh, I try to avoid using true black on things, except for maybe for shadows in this case. So I'm going to use this dark warm gray, maybe darken that up a little bit with the black for that part. So uh, this will give us a chance to go ahead and use that point three brush. Let's go ahead and get started. So I went ahead and applied the shadows as you saw there using now the .2 Mobius and in between colors I want to make note of here because we're going to switch to the highlights in a moment. Um, I go to the sink which is just right over there. I press my finger against the nozzle here and as you blow air through that it's going to actually blow everything back and it's a good way to clear out this little chamber here 
and um, I do a little more thorough cleaning once I'm done, but uh, in between colors, that's a good way to do it. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and mix the highlights. Very pleased with how this is all working out, switching from that 0.3 brush uh, to the 0.2. The 0.3 worked really nice to apply a very uh, even coating along the entire area here with that base color. And switching then to the 0.2 uh, airbrush allowed me to easily apply the, the shadows. So let me mix in the color now for the highlights and we'll put those in. So the mix for the highlights, again, it really all is just a variation of your base color. For the shadows, I mixed in more of the burnt red and less of the pyrrole. But now we're gonna do the exact opposite for the highlights. So most of it's gonna be the pyrrole red here. Just gonna put a drop or two of the burnt red. What I'm using for thinner now is this thinner from Createx, or Createx, I'm not sure how you pronounce that. I think that's a bit too dark. We're going to go back to mixing in more of this brighter red. And you'll notice I'm not even using the paint cup because I'm just using a few drops of paint in the airbrush. That's all we're going to need. In fact, this is a bit more than we're going to need. All right, so this is how he's looking here after the burnt sienna has been applied, ready now to move on to the next step. Now, this is an outline that I printed that goes over all the different steps we're gonna be following. Again, bear in mind, I don't have the colors they're suggesting to use here because this is garage kit colors. Um, and uh, so what I'm, what I'm gonna do is just pick flesh colors that I think will work for this. Um, the next step now will be a semi-transparent, they're using semi-transparent virgin flesh. So for that, I'm just gonna use a basic skin tone and they recommend thinning that with a 50-50 mix of either Future or their uh, flat top coat. I'm not sure what advantage that gives you versus using just regular thinner, but uh, I'm gonna give it a shot with this here. I don't have Future on hand, but I found this at Home Depot a while ago, and I've used it in the same manner that people use Future, and it seems to work, so we're gonna give this a try. So the idea is to apply very thin layers of this to start basically blending this down. And uh, after the basic skin tone, we're gonna move on to a brownish color and do the same thing with it. Now, this is a little filter I found on Amazon that um, you can actually put into your paint cup here. Uh, the reason I do this is because some of these paints have been sitting around for quite a while and uh, they get kind of lumpy. And as much as I try to mix them together, sometimes some of that still is left behind. So uh, rather than clogging up the airbrush, I use these little filters to help out. Okay, well this is how he's looking after having applied several coats of that, uh, of that flesh tone. And uh, the instructions called for misting that over and that's what I did. So the next step here is to uh, apply a modeling onto the entire face and neck area. And this is where that ability to create fine lines is gonna come into play. It's gonna be really helpful to be able to do that uh, at this scale anyway. So um, we're gonna use two colors for this. Uh, one is gonna be a rose color and the other is gonna be that brown color. I thought we had to use the brown for the entire head but I misread the instructions. So it's gonna actually be used in this next step. So let me mix up the paint and then we'll go through that step and see how it's looking. Uh, once I'm done with that step though, he's gonna look kind of weird. So um, by the way, I did wanna mention that uh, for painting this, I didn't wanna take the chance of that floor polish clogging up the airbrush. I wasn't sure how it was gonna behave with an airbrush, but it worked just fine. I happened to have their GHAD39 on hand with a 0.3 needle, so that's why I used to test that, and it worked just fine. So from here on out, I'm gonna be using the Mobius brushes instead.
All right, so this is how he's looking, and the next step now is to apply what they are suggesting, a bronze flesh tone. Uh, since I don't have that on hand, I've mixed up flat flesh and beige red for this color. As with the other coating that covered the initial shading, uh, they want us to apply fine mists as well here. They don't want us to completely cover all of the modeling there. Well, the next step is a spatter step. Uh, I think that's probably splatter, but um, basically we're gonna take that flesh tone, darken it up just slightly, and we're gonna splatter some spots all over. Um, again, just to kind of give some, just a more realistic appearance to that skin, because many people have, you know, little dots and things like that on the skin, so we're gonna go for that next. I'm hoping you can appreciate some of this here. I know the camera is having a tough time capturing it, but uh, I really am pleased with how it all turned out. Um, getting some nice variations in color as I go along his face and the top of his head. I think the technique worked out pretty well. Continue to see really good strong resemblance here to Patrick Stewart as I'm turning this from side to side. So um, once all the other details are painted, um, hopefully it'll look a lot like him. So, of course, I have to paint the rest of the details here, eyebrows, and of course the hair, which is going to be a little bit of a challenge since he has gray hair, uh, but we'll see how that turns out. I think for the most part I'm going to be doing some dry brushing there for the hair. Pretty much done using the airbrushes here. So, uh, let me get those final details painted, and I will show you Jean-Luc Picard shortly. Okay, so here is the finished Picard bust, and I decided here on using pictures rather than video, as the video camera just doesn't quite capture the colors that great. The bust is an incredible likeness of Sir Patrick Stewart, I just can't believe how much he looks like him. The technique worked well here, although I'd make some modifications to what I did here the next time. Uh, I first would make the burnt sienna just a little darker and not cover it up as much. They also recommended that you knock down the modeling 50% when you're applying that uh, fine mist over it, and I went a little too far with that. I didn't think it was enough, and um, it still looked a bit too obvious to me. But bear in mind, the modeling will be covered even more when you do your final shading after the splattering effect. But I am really pleased as this all worked out so much better than the first time I tried this technique. Even if the scale was larger, having an airbrush that can emit a fine spray I think is very helpful. The bust was completed using a light spray with a gloss coat from Createx to just give it a slight sheen that looks more natural. Now I didn't record the hand painting of the eyes, eyebrows, mouth, and hair because I've shown stuff like that on a channel before. But the key to accuracy here is to use fine brushes, and the brushes I used were purchased from zembrush.com. I'll post the sizes and a link to zembrush below. As for the hair, I did want to make a comment about that. The natural inclination with gray hair seems to be to go with a dark gray-black combination and then covering it with a light gray. But I know Patrick Stewart had brown hair when he was younger, so I chose instead to start with a base of Monument Hobbies Burnt Umber, which was then mixed with their light warm gray. The latter was dry brushed over the umber until I got to the level of coverage that I wanted. Highlights were then dry brushed by using pure warm gray. I think it turned out natural looking. This is a great sculpt by Antonio Dato, and I plan on trying a few others in the future. Hats off to him for creating such a nice piece. Overall, I'm very pleased with the performance of the brushes. Both the .3 and .2 did a great job, and I look forward to using them with other projects. The new nozzles do a really nice job with providing a consistent, even spray, and I have to admit, they're the best I've used so far. So let's wrap this review up now with some final comments. So again, this uh, Celestial collection here now is only going to be limited to 300 kits. So if you're interested in getting a hold of the brushes this way, uh, just keep a look at their website here. Uh, as of this morning, I did not um, see that they had priced it yet, but uh, they did make mention that it's going to be available as of February 25th. So keep an eye out for that. Of course, this is not the only way to get a hold of the airbrushes. You can certainly buy them individually. As of posting this video now, the point two is $76.99, while the point three is $64.99. So let me take a minute now to summarize a few points about each of the airbrushes here. 
So taking a look at the point three brush, uh, could it function as an airbrush you'd use for general application? It's possible depending on the type of builds that you're doing. For most general work, point three is often used. It certainly sufficed for the Picard bust here as well as for the Dungeons and Dragons figures I showed in my last video. And the airbrush, if you recall, I used there was a 98 GHAC brush with a point three eight nozzle. This size is definitely functional with mid to smaller scale projects, but certainly this might limit you if you are building larger scale model kits, in which case the advantage of the larger size nozzle becomes obvious. A larger .5 nozzle is available in both the Ace and Advanced series. And speaking of nozzles now, one thing that differentiates the performance line versus the others is of course the actual nozzle design itself. Is there much difference? I would have to say that they're pretty close, but I did feel the application was a little smoother with the newer Mac design and can see some advantages, especially with smaller scales. You would definitely be fine, of course, with the 8-channel nozzle for most general work and larger scale projects for sure. One thing I can note in addition is I did find the newer nozzle a little easier to clean, especially with improved access to clearing out the interior of the nozzle itself using either a Q-tip or a brush specifically designed for airbrush cleaning. Let's move on now to the point two brush, and that one pretty much stands on its own. It's very obvious it's designed for finer details. Having the added control for airflow at the front, along with the new nozzle design and the smaller needle size, are certainly all very helpful attributes to have, and I wasn't disappointed in how it delivered. Both brushes are well made, easy to handle, and I felt I had good control and precision. So I know it can be a bit overwhelming, especially if you're just starting out and you're trying to decide on an airbrush. Uh, it's, it's sometimes a bit of a challenge to try to figure out what airbrush it is you're going to be uh, purchasing. Um, hopefully this rundown and uh, going through this uh, process of using the airbrush gives you an idea of, of how to kind of approach that, that problem or that question. It really just comes down to what it is you're going to be using the airbrush for. Now, this being a review, it's certainly reasonable for me to post anything I think that they could uh, improve upon with these airbrushes. As of now, I can't really think of any. I, I just didn't really run across any major issues. Um, I would say that uh, with the point two, I maybe had a little bit of a, of a problem when I was first trying to get some fine lines that the paint was kind of um, uh, not quite as fine as I wanted it to be, but I think it really was more of uh, the way I had, I had mixed the paint rather than the airbrush itself. Uh, that's certainly something I'll, I'll keep an eye on. But as I went on with the project, I really didn't have any issues. Now, uh, bear in mind my experience with airbrushing now has been pretty much limited to applying paint on larger surfaces. This is really the first time I'm venturing into using an airbrush for fine detailing. So as I get more experience, maybe there might be a few things I'll run across that I could see they can prove upon. But for now, it seems to be meeting my needs for that. Well, I certainly hope you enjoyed following along. It really was a lot of fun painting Picard here. Uh, it's just remarkable, again, the resemblance that he was able to achieve with this particular bust. Now, I think what I'm gonna end up doing is reprinting him a li as large as I can make him and try the technique again. There were a few things, as I mentioned, um, I thought I could improve upon. So, uh, you know, practice makes perfect. Not sure I'll ever be perfect at it, but certainly practicing will, will help me get there, or at least close to it anyway. Um, also, I went ahead and printed now his Han Solo bust and uh, some good resemblance here as well. Uh, not quite as strong as the Picard bust, but uh, but not bad. And uh, I think uh, certainly it could look a little different once he's painted. So I'll keep you apprised of this one as well. There is another painting technique I'm wanting to try. Uh, it's a bit different than what I did with Picard here. So um, if I feel it's worthwhile posting a video about, uh, I'll certainly do that. All right, guys, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me here on my YouTube channel or at modeler at gmail.com. Coming up now on the channel, finally getting into uh, the, uh, the build of the Galactica launch bay. Uh, so I, I definitely will um, move on with that and post an update on that project very soon. That's going to be a lot of fun to work on. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Well, I can't quite say I enjoyed having paint sprayed at me, but at least I'm looking a bit more like myself. Appreciate your attention. Look out.